Dragon Ball Daima, episode one. And it only felt right to dress up for the last time that we'll see a premiere from the one and the only Akira Toriyama. Let's talk about this episode and whether it lived up to the hype. All right, guys, Brent here back with variants cover all things Marvel, DC, Lord of the Rings, anime, gaming, Star Wars, and more. This time, Dragon Ball Diamond, I gotta say, it lived up to the hype for me. I know a lot of people are not a huge fan of the animation style that has been kind of presented ever since we've changed artists way back from, you know, the Dragon Ball Z days from when we saw the Majin Buu arc, which was touched upon a lot in this. Because, you know, back in the old animation style, it was a little bit grittier, it was a little bit edgier. There was definitely more blood throughout shown in Dragon Ball, and it felt a little bit more realistic as you were about everything involving the series moving on. We started this episode, but a very, very nice and what I felt almost sentimental and touching way to Akira Toriyama, kind of touching upon some of his, what I believe personally is one of his greatest works, which was the Boo arc. The Boo arc and the Cell arc for me are like peak Dragon Ball Z, period. And I know Super has had a couple nice moments with the Tournament of Power, but it's just not the same. This kind of touched upon everything that we have been seeing as far as, you know, the Dragon Ball Xenoverse games or even Dragon Ball Sparking Zero has touched upon in a little bit of snippet. We are finally addressing the demon world in its entirety. And I know we kind of had like that light, you know, ever so gentle touching upon it where we had the demon king Debora. And that's where we opened up with this episode. We got a recap of everything going on from a really, really cool looking world as far as the demon world is concerned. I really like the animation that they had there. The, the realm looked legitimate. It looked like a very, very powerful place with a lot of great magic and a lot of great lore that I'm hoping that we'll be able to delve further into as the season goes on. But as we were covering everything involving like the Z arc, we saw that they, the they, and by they I mean King Gano and our boy, who is the Gesu, who happens to be related to the Supreme Kai. Small world there. I wonder what kind of familiar relation issue that kind of broke out everything involving there. But ultimately, we saw that Degesu and King Goma were kind of watching over everything that had been going on as far as the Z arc involving Boo. They were very just outright upset that King Debora just flat out left and had managed to get persuaded by Bobbity the way that he did. Got dissuaded with everything that was going on. I got to say, Debora is a great looking character. He got ousted in a terrible way. But at the same time, I do much prefer what King Debora was over what King Gamo is. Gamo is reeks for me of what Garlic Jr. had going on where you don't take him seriously enough until ultimate too late. I'm sure there'll be some transformation to make him a legitimate threat at some point in time. But again, I digress. We're gonna have to wait for that moment in time. So we go over kind of like some of Goku's greatest hits, everything involving like even Mystic Gohan, which was a total dud, everything involving the fusion of Trunks and Goten for Gotenks, and the final conclusion of the Z arc where we have the spirit bomb of Majin Buu, and we just kind of leave off at that moment in time. So I got to say, Hell is a really elite looking place, but again... We just kind of had mostly recap to start this episode. Ultimately, we start finally breaking down what King Goma is all about. He's all about seizing power of the all three demon realms. And then ultimately, he even had to go into the Majin realm and kind of discuss what was going on there. To be like, hey, I'm the new Supreme King. This is it. This is how things are be done. And we're going to kind of aggre- kind of get into how things are going on from there. And ultimately, we saw that um, Deborah is definitely someone who's a key player, and he had some kind of relation with Dr. Arinsu. Arinsu was kind of working on some of the high-tech stuff involving the Demon Realm, but we never delved into the specifics, but we can tell that she's definitely a character of interest moving forward. She's going to be a power player moving on, and I'm very excited to see ultimately like what we kind of do with her as far as her arc is concerned, because she was eavesdropping on everything that got Gamma was doing with his advisor for the longest. She was kind of able to pick in and out of what's going on. And we can tell that Gamma has a soft spot for her because she he's talking about like how beautiful she is and how elegant she is. And so much that's a, probably a part she'll be able to play up a bit to kind of win the affections of everything else going on. Think kind of like Natasha Romanoff in the MCU when she was talking to the Russian 
back all the way in the first Avengers where she was just getting all the information out of him because she's pretty and she's able to kind of pull that little arc out where the male brain just all of a sudden shuts off and all of a sudden they start divulging all their plans, which Gamma is more than akin to doing because he's exhibiting a lot of Garlic Jr.'s laws where it's like, I'm going to tell you every single part of my plan in full detail what's going on and that's up for you to decide. And his main plan is threefold because now he wants to ensure that the demon realm is ultimately safe because Dr. Orensu planted this little seed of doubt in his mind that what if the Z-Warriors went in the demon realm? And I assure you, the Z-Warriors want no beef with the demon realm. They don't even know it exists. Goku's not intelligent enough to figure that out because he hit his head on that rock so dang hard it made him a good person, but probably one of the slowest mentally main characters of any main character of any major shonen comic, and that is actually saying a lot. But at the same time, you know, Gamma divulges his full plan and he's out here discussing, hey, I'm going to make them young so that they're weaker because ultimately we can't kind of convince everyone that, you know, it has to be a good wish because it's based upon white magic as opposed to black magic, which apparently there is some significant difference as opposed to everything that's going on. I'm shocked immortality wasn't kind of like first on his wish list. But hey, we'll cover that at some moment in time. And his second wish was to ultimately get the evil third eye, known as the Tertian Oculus. And they didn't really delve into too much what it did, other than the fact that if you put it on your head, you would get a huge power-up, which Deborah's father, Abura, who was the supreme demon king before him, had going on, and then it went mysteriously missing at some point in time between Abura and Deborah's reign. So we can kind of see that maybe Deborah was kind of seeking out power through Bobbity because he was trying to replace the gap that the Tertian Oculus was kind of giving him as a power amp that he supposed was going to come to him ultimately when his father either passed or was assassinated or whatever the case may be. They didn't really delve into much how demon politics work. I'm just assuming it's not going to be going all that good or all that fluidly. And then the third wish was left ultimately up to be decided. We see that Degesu was kind of hinting that he would like the wish. So I'm assuming he has more ulterior motives to everything going on. I don't really know what those could be. I would assume likely it has something to do involving his brother. It seems like there seems to be some kind of family squabble of what's going on here. Because his brother, the Supreme Kai, seems to be completely in everyone else's business in a goody two shoes. And then we have Degesu, who seems to be very deplorable. And then even his older sister, Doctor, she is just crazy. I'm trying to figure out what she's up to because she's also related into this, but she doesn't seem to harbor any of the quick thinking reactions emotionally that the boys have. So we'll see ultimately where Dr. Aransu is just kind of going to fall in this arc. And then ultimately, we kind of end our episode with them making the way to the Earth Realm after picking up Neva the Namek, whose powers are very, very well thought out. But I'm assuming he was banished from Namek just due to the fact if you're going to the Demon Realm to create Dragon Balls, that you're probably not that good of a person. You would fall ultimately like where Lord Slug did, where you're in this bad area where you're not going to be respected by the Namekians all that well. And ultimately, you know, be a bad guy, get punished to hell. and Using his powers, he's able to not only pull the Dragon Balls from Earth, even though they had just been turned to stone, but able to revive their power and awake Shenron like it was nothing. So Neva is someone that you don't want to mess with, but thank goodness he's old, he's fragile, and mentally he doesn't look like he's hanging in in all that regard. We end the episode with the wish from our demon King Namo, turning our Z warriors ultimately into children so that they'll be significantly weaker. How everything is going to play out, I'm assuming they're going to have to go into the demon realm start kind of 1v1ing people all the way through to kind of get to where they need to be. I think that giant fish is going to be something that Goku is going to have an interesting reaction with as far as transporting through the demon realm layers. But again, so far, it's living up to the hype. I'm very curious as to where they're going with this. And ultimately, I hope this is a great honoring of the one and the only Akira Toriyama. Be sure to hit that lovely red subscribe button if you're new to the channel and made it this far. Or it'll be in this little logo in the bottom right corner of the video. It's free. Greatly helps us out and keeps you up to date with all the latest content that we have, including Supermarket Simulator, Agatha All Along, and DC's The Penguin tonight. Well, tomorrow morning, I should say. I'll be here for My Hero Academia's Season 7 finale. I'll see you then.